Sup, what's good? Monarch here with the very first episode of Friday Force. This is a game I've been working on. It's uh, a mod pack compilation and a lot of custom programming. Like, uh, right now we start off in this little pigman village here, you know. As a kid I always wanted them to be in Minecraft, so in my little mind test engine game, there they are, right there. It's actually a reskin of another little thing. It's just a placeholder texture, but you see, you can trade with them and whatnot, but really... It's not what I'm trying to get into yet, is, uh, we've started in a village. You always start in a village, uh, because safety. You'll learn why very soon in the course of this video. Uh, you'll see right above my inventory, uh, the hotbar there, uh, I have a little green bar, that's my temperature, and I also have these little yellow eyes, that's my sanity. Uh, these things matter a fair bit, because, uh... In this particular spawn, it's quite a bad world I've started in, actually. Uh, this is my, my multiplayer server. You see I've selected a skin there. Uh, he's got a bit of a, a visual glitch in his arm there that I will uh, swap out in a moment. But, effectively, right now, this place that we're in, Cave Town, is very dark. And it's also very hot. So, you will start just roasting in spawn and also probably go insane from lack of sunlight. Because, uh, sorry, you've got a pig guardian there. You can tell what he's the equivalent of. You know, you don't really want to mess with him. Uh, also, my HUD is a bit broken because I like using field of view 90 like a crazy person. Uh, but if you use the normal field of view, there's no glitches like that, don't worry. Uh, so, essentially, it, I'm trying to find my way out of here. And I'm also trying to get some basic survival things, like, you know, you see I got an achievement. Uh, I'm even replanting, because this is my server, remember, so I'm trying to replant where I can. Uh, you know, I want some food, because food is how you heal in this, kind of like old school MC. Uh, there's no stamina either, although I did program a sprint, it just is on a timer system, rather, like you can sprint for about 30 seconds before you have to stop and recover. Uh, and also, so water cools you down, so in a place like Cave Town, that's quite nice. Uh, it's got all this nice open water. You can see there's some weirdness there, like that floating island. That's because there's tides in the game. Uh, tides, the water based on daytime will go up or down. It creates some visual glitches uh, because of you're actually physically removing a bunch of blocks at a time. But it's fun, you know? It... it, it I swear, like when you're on a boat and you go through a wave, it is quite, quite cool. And uh, this is a little mahogany swamp island there. Like there's a little wave that I'm going down. You see, a, in a boat it's a little cooler, but there's a whale there. You know, you, you, uh, it's kind of a rare find, so they need some relatively open space. Might as well go say hi to Moby. Uh, and that's where I also noticed something kind of funny is that I don't know if it's intentional or a glitch because this is a mod that I've tinkered a lot in called Villages uh, and where there's supposed to be wheat here there's these diamond blocks and that's my own texture by the way I'm not a really good artist but you might think that wow that's really ridiculous just end game items there they're not end game in this it's a gemstone you're not gonna make a bunch of armor and tools out of it if you want that you should get titanium or better yet mithril because we are in the land of dwarves, in the land of noon, as this place is called. You can see there's some primitive forges here that I'm kind of crawling on. Some unknown items. Don't worry about it. It's it's glitchy. I'm gonna fix it. Uh, but there's some there's some decent things. Some bell pepper in there, you know. It's a little sunken uh, basket at the bottom of the ocean there. And there's even mud, as you see, that I slow down and get stuck in the liquid mud. Yes, that's my dog over there. I don't know if you hear him whining. Yeah, the uh, the thing with something like mud, kind of funny but simple, it was actually a bit tough to learn how to program it to reduce your speed when you walk on it. But in the old Minecraft mod that I made, uh, mud was like the first thing that I added. So it was also the first thing I added in this. Uh, and I ironically, I stopped playing Minecraft a long time ago, and I didn't know that they added mud and mud bricks in the same time that I was, and I was like, oh, this is so cool, it's gonna be original. And then they, like, added it to Minecraft, like, at the same time, roughly, or, I don't know, it could have been after. 
or before, I wasn't paying much attention. I don't know if you noticed that there, that the mushroom healed me. Certain mushrooms hurt you when you eat them, so I'm kind of glad I picked the right one there. I think it was a red one. Uh, now, I'm taking damage right now in the darkness, as you'll see. That's becoming a bit insane. I get on my boat thinking I'll go somewhere. I don't have even a torch to hold in the darkness, so I'm quite afraid and alone as I'm swimming out at sea here. And it does not end well for me. I drown going insane swimming at sea, and I end up back in cave town. Kind of a sad beginning, but what can you do? It teaches us a bit of a lesson. Uh, don't go out at night unprepared. If you don't got torches or some sort of light, you are probably not going to be able to go out. Uh, so you can even see I huddle in this uh, this forge in Cave Town just because it's got some light here. I even I try and sneak jump up there, but it's just not working. Uh, it's yeah, it's tough. It's tough. But that's kind of the beauty of it, right? We're trying to beat this hunter-gatherer stage. We gotta make some flint tools, some woven armor. We gotta get a little bit of food going. And we gotta visit a couple different biomes. That's really the goal of the first age. And this is a survival civilization game. The goal is you start as this hunter-gatherer. You're part of another society. You, you strike out on your own. You are effectively a caveman doing flint... You're doing ceramics, eventually carpentry, and uh, then you'll start doing stonework until, you know, you go through the stages, you learn how to smelt metal, and you go until you learn how to make alloys and then something really advanced like steel. And then eventually the goal is that you make your ancient astronaut rocket in this dwarven land of noon, and you go to space. And that's kind of where the end game starts of just like... Congrats, you're, you're at the end game. Do what you want. You're in space, bud. You rule the world. So, uh, me and my friends have been trying to make it to space. You can see there's books that you can write in here as I talk about how I died. Kind of funny. Uh, but none of us have made it to space yet. Our main society on this server just hit the Iron Age as I'm recording my commentary. Not when I'm recording the video. We were still in Bronze Age for so long, but we finally got enough stone to build watchtowers. It's, this game is honestly a good mix of Dwarf Fortress and, my, and traditional old-school Minecraft. So, it's got a lot of interesting mechanics like aquifers, uh, stone layers. You also, that's another thing, is that there's no depth limit in this game. You can go infinitely far down. Uh, and I've programmed it so that there are unique layers down to, I think, 1,024 uh, negative, that is. At which point the you start getting into the inner core. It's either is it a thousand or ten thousand? You start getting into the inner core, which is all crystalline, until eventually you hit the realm, which is known as Cathon. Or I guess that is Cathon. Sorry, the crystalline sort of thing, deep caves. But then eventually you'll hit. Uh, Nkai. And Nkai is really hard to get into. Nkai is like the realm of Sethogua, the Eldritch God. You don't want to be in Sethogua's realm, let me just say. It's hard to survive down there, and there's all sorts of scary creatures. But you need to get Mithril to even break the impenetrable layer that far down at around 5,000 depth. Or you can build a warp gate. You can see I just slammed a, a door on a vampire there. <laughs> um, yeah, there's vampires on a lot of little bosses that spawn in this game as well, like trolls, uh, gladiators, cyclops, dragons, uh, all sorts of zombies. There's even undead knights that roam around, like skeletons with their armor and swords. Uh, even uh, one that I charmingly refer to as the Jaxolotl, because it's an absolutely ripped axolotl person that just, you know, goes around in the water. You don't want to mess with him. I also think at this point I've decided that my character becomes a bit of a thief here. Uh, because, you know, I look at their trades and I'm like, that's nice, that's nice. And I just lock them in their room. And uh, I just start trash-talking them. In the, in the text chat, calling myself the Lionel... Uh, the, uh, the robber, the thief, 
the loon. I'm actually like. So, oh, so hold on. So you see that my uh, my screen got a little little hot there. It's getting a bit fuzzy, like someone put a bunch of Vaseline on my screen. Uh, that's not some terrible gimmick. It's that uh, we are hot. If you look at the bar down below. Uh, I'm glad that I have a torch, because at least I'm not going to go insane holding a torch any worse than I am already, but I'm hot, and holding a light source will make you hotter. Ooh, there must have been lightning nearby there. Uh, lightning's interesting. I've only physically witnessed it once in-game, and we have gone all the way to Bronze Age, like I said. Uh, but here we're just trying to beat Hunter-Gatherer. And so we finally reach the edge of Cave Town into this nice little heath. Uh, that's a little heath biome. And I am a, I'm, you know, this is my community server. I don't want to just rob it blind in the spawn town, even if the spawn town makes you go insane and, and just burn up with heat. Uh, you can see swimming around. Uh, and I'm, at this point, I want to chop some trees, but you can't just go up and punch a tree, as you see. You need to collect. Uh, basically ferns and grass and flint and you know you make some sticks out of out of whatever you can find or even scavenge them from the leaves and that's how you make a flint axe based on I will openly say I programmed this and it was based on the Tinker survival mod my textures are also really bad I think I just took an actual flint texture and turned it sideways on a stick and put a little bit of green on it. I'm a legend. You don't have to tell me. Uh, so, I also think the game accidentally crashes here, because you see there's that little placement preview that happens. I think it bugged out when I was... Uh, the gravel fell as the placement was there, and it glitched out trying to get rid of the placement. Uh, that's actually a different mod. I didn't program that one, uh, but I do like to try and make bug fixes for existing mods when I find things like this. I hope that really doing this project, I haven't released it yet because I'm scared, because, you know, it is all open source stuff, but the licenses are very... there's a lot of licenses involved, and it's kind of... I it's new to me a bit, and it's kind of scary. And also there's placeholder textures like those pigmen you saw, I can't obviously release those, and a lot of the skins are also placeholders. I could get away with the fact that I'm not selling this game for money, obviously, uh, and getting them off like Planet Minecraft, where I get a lot of them. It's, uh, it's, it's got its own little, like, license of you can download our skins and whatever, but obviously you can't sell them or things like that. Uh, but so you see, I chopped wood successfully. And most wood has physics, but I just forgot for this type of tree, because it comes from another mod. Uh, some trees I've programmed myself, but a lot of them I have not. And you can tell if it's one that I've worked on, because... Uh... So, sorry, I just picked a fight with a dwarf in the water, and he killed me there. I wanted him with a flint hatchet, and he had a good old metal axe or something. But he, he said all oh, elves are liars, and I called him out on it. We had a bit of a fight, so I died again. I'm heading back there, swimming in the lake, when I noticed that there was a shark around. And uh, I did not want to mess with that. You'll see I did a high jump there. It's a glitch I've since programmed out of the game. I fixed it, actually. Uh, but it was meant to be a double jump. You see there, I try and break my fall, but I still nearly die. Uh, yet, luckily, I'm in the right place. You see that? That's my dead body skeleton. Uh, since I've updated the game to the newer version of the engine, 5.9, there's a new shadow glitch that's happening with that skeleton model. Where instead of it being see-through, the see-through parts are black. I'm trying to fix it. Don't know what's up. Might be my settings. You'll see these are the first entities I ever programmed their uh, COD. They school together and they swim through the blocks of water and you can even cook them in food to cook fish. Uh, my texture is really great, I know, it's a little 3x3 three three fish. What do you expect? It was the first texture I ever made for this game. Uh, the first three I ever made were the fish, then the mud, then the sand you see right there. Uh, I'm not a great programmer by any means. And the 2x2 two two crafting is quite glitchy in this. You can see I'm making things in this weird diagonal pattern. Uh, it's because I tried scrambling it. 
so that you couldn't craft 3x3 things effectively, but for some reason it uh, just it didn't work quite right. Uh, and so, but either way, I have a crafting table, and you can see I've hollowed out this little gravel space, and I start putting down a little wood frame. And I realize I can't put that down there. You'd think, oh, why not? Well, it's because you need a hammer. You need to hammer it down. If you don't hammer in your wood, it will eventually fall down from gravity. So some extra steps required. It's not just your floating blocks like Minecraft. A lot of the floating stuff does not happen in this game. Uh, so I built this door, and I had to time skip because I was fighting a tree monster that showed up at my door. I collect the stick from there, as you see. And now I'm just hot. So, me trying to cool down, I jump in the water, uh, but then I start worrying because my light isn't really, you know, you can't swim that easy and illuminate the water, because if you go under the water, then it takes the light away, obviously. But it's a peaceful moment, the moon's out, I'm trying to cool down. Now I time skipped there a little bit. I don't quite remember what happened, <laughs> I, but my health was down really low. I think I saw another tree monster and then I died to insanity. Just bad luck. Honestly, that's me, maybe, not even luck, that's me having bad plays attacking monsters in the dark at an early level. Uh, so I end up looting a bit relentlessly at this point. I'm a bit tired. We've already died, what, three times? And I just want to get on the road, you know, I want to actually beat the hunter-gatherer stage. We're getting close, we've built some flint tools. We've uh, explored the heath biome, seen a river. And now you can see I'm heading back to where I was going. And I have to dive in the water to get my body, because it's all the way at the bottom there. But I get my stuff, and I head back to my little crib. And then this is when panic strikes. I close my door, I think, oh, everything's fine. I build a little bed. And uh, that's when a raid happens yeah, in a little bit. You'll see it says they're coming in chat in a minute or two here. Yeah, and I get scared at that point. I say, oh, crap, and I start packing up. I'm like, nope, because the raid warriors uh, can break blocks. And I don't want them. That was a Mosasaurus there. <laughs> Sounds like it was a raid of gnolls, because that's their death sound there. Uh, it's an open source death sound, obviously. I didn't go out and record real uh, hyenas. I'm sorry. Beached fish. <clears throat> but yeah, I start just going. And I make it pretty far out to here, wherever I'm at. And this is where I accidentally die again, because I don't see that barbarian on the right there didn't see him, I was so confused when I died, but that's a mini-boss, that I, he's not even a mini-boss, it's a boss, he's, he's just straight up a guy, big hulking human, just two-punched me, right there, you know, me, a little dwarven me, so I head all the way back once again, and he's gone, because in the old update uh, that this is recorded on, uh, mobs did not persist, unless they were passive, but now monsters do persist in the new version. So if I went back, he theoretically would still be there. And water jumping down in water, I wanted to show it off. You go a lot deeper than you would in normal Minecraft. Because this is not Minecraft at all. This is uh, not even Java. This is a different... This is Lua. This is all programmed in. Uh, you know, so you... The fall into water needs a lot more depth. A block of water or two is not going to save you. It's also a peat bog, by the way, our second biome. It's um, It's got all this moss here, and you can see it's, a, it's quite laggy, I think because I use shaders and fancy leaves, uh, but I went through this uh, mangrove swamp here, so we visited three biomes, and I start collecting a lot of ferns. Uh, I accidentally wasted a ton of the original ferns that I was collecting because I turned them into string when I realized that they actually are supposed to stay as ferns if you're trying to make woven armor and stuff. And woven armor is really simple. It's nothing crazy. It's just the earliest tier that you can get made out of just forage materials. The step above it will soon be wood that you'll see soon. But this is also a redwood biome. Uh, those redwood trees are self-programmed. You can tell because the trees that are proper, quote-unquote, not from other mods in this game, grow dynamically uh, and uniquely, like that one Minecraft mod. 
it's uh, you'll see that if you go to a forest, like an apple forest, all the trees will just be saplings when you go there, and you'll kind of be like, man, this sucks, maybe. But if you built a base there, the whole forest will grow. If you're neighboring a forest, it will get bigger and taller over time, and every single tree is unique and different. So you see I start making this uh, woven armor here out of the ferns. Uh, you can see the string of failure in my inventory as well. Uh, yeah, we're making it through. You know, we've got a crafting table there as well. Now I should note, there's not just the 3x3 crafting table either. There is also what's called a workbench. A workbench is even better because a crafting table spits out your items when you exit it. Uh, whereas the workbench does not. A workbench also lets you do carpentry and uh, efficiently shape wood, and it also lets you store stuff on it, on a little rack. So really, I'm just using the basic one. You see me throw the flint spear there just to give you a little demo. That's a firefly there, by the way. Uh, and then I made a chisel, you can see, and I write my name here. If anyone ever goes to my server, uh, and you go to these exact coordinates that you see in the top left there, you'll see my little signature, uh, Lionel, which is not my name, but it's my random smurf account name so this one mushroom just has my name around it and it always will until someone breaks those blocks uh yeah my apologies for the lag uh, again the whole shader thing it's low tide right now so it actually is quite dry that's seaweed up there if you see that green stuff uh so the tide physically removes blocks and uh, in this case, because it's later in the day, the tide is lower, uh, it, it's kind of nice. Uh, but that's all I've got for today. So I hope this first episode, us beating the hunter-gatherer stage, was entertaining at least. And I will see you next time. Peace out. Catch y'all on the flip side.